Carl, great to have you on the show. And that's exactly where I want to start with you, especially in light of the CarMax commentary last week about macro factors, vehicle affordability, rising interest rates, low consumer confidence. Are these issues that you're starting to see man manifest within your business? Well, we're seeing more headwinds in the used car business. But what's been driving our record profits the last year or two has been new vehicle margins and double-digit service growth. So we're still pretty much intact on, uh, on the way we've been traveling. But it is a fact that the used car segment is more impacted by high interest rates, consumer confidence, and, and things like that. So we have to make some adjustments in our used car business to, uh, to take into account these factors. But new cars don't seem to be, they seem to be holding up those prices is what, is what you're telling me. Is there a point at which higher interest rates would begin to dent that demand? Or is the, is the math a little different than, say, used cars? Well, the big issue now is the order bank we have. So I, I'm sitting in the U.K. today where we announced at the end of the second quarter we have a new vehicle order bank of 17,000 units, and we sell about 7,000 units a quarter. So you can kind of get a feel for that. Um, same in the U.S. We have a pretty large new vehicle order bank. But sure, extended periods of high interest rates are not good for the automotive business. That's a fact. Are you seeing more $1,000 a month car payments? Is that becoming more common? Uh, yeah, for sure. Now, bear in mind that what the manufacturers are making and what our order bank consists of, particularly in the U.S., are big trucks, SUVs, luxury brand vehicles. And so these are very expensive vehicles. And yes, the, these car payments are higher than they've ever been. But we're into our third year now of recession level new vehicle supply. So there's still a pretty big cushion between the level of demand and order bank and the level of supply. You have a pretty sizable business in the U.K. I mean, we've seen the pummeling of, of the pound there in recent weeks, violent moves in, in the rate markets as well. How are you navigating those financial conditions? Is it affecting business on the ground there? Well, not yet, although I would say we have the same used car challenges in the U.K. that you have in the U.S. market, because that's the price-sensitive part of our business. But the vast majority of our UK business is luxury brands like BMW, where I'm sitting today. So those order banks remain strong. Now, when we translate our UK profits into dollars, the, uh, the weakening of the pound is not helpful, clearly. Mm. Um, as we see this move towards electric vehicles and that begin to take root in a more meaningful way in the marketplace, what does it mean looking out, and I realize this might be a years-long story, but what does that mean looking out to the future pipeline of used vehicles? And I, and I ask that because these batteries have a finite life, and you get to a point sometimes where maybe the battery needs to be replaced, and that could cost more than the actual uh, price, resale price of the car. Well, we need to get a lot of experience with that. And I think the fact that you just mentioned may... Uh, end up in a situation where a, a lot more battery electric vehicles are leased than, uh, than traditional vehicles. And therefore, the owner doesn't take that risk of owning it after four or five years. So that could be a factor. But I have to admit, in these hybrid vehicles like Toyota Prius, as we've been selling for 10 or 15 years, we thought we would see a lot of battery replacements as the cars age, and we haven't. Now, maybe battery electric vehicles will be different, but I think the whole industry is going to gain experience as they go with that. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.